Hi everyone, welcome back to KQ's channel. Today we are going to look at the last part of network and graph theory. Mostly this is about the problem solving. Okay, now we are going to look at network, how to represent information in the form of network. A network is a type of unit graph and can be used to represent overlapping and intersecting information. Networks are widely used in almost every area of our daily lives. A network that is drawn and displayed in graphic forms enables the interrelationships between various information or data structures to be understood easily. Networks can be drawn as directed weighted graph or directed unweighted graph. And also here, undirected weighted graph or undirected unweighted graph. Okay. We look at the next part here. This is about the transportation network and also the social network. Transportation networks can be shown as weighted graphs and unweighted graphs. The weight can represent the distance, traveling time or cost of the journey. The well-known navigation system in the weighted transportation networks is the GPS global positioning system. The diagram on the left here shows the train transit network in Kuala Lumpur Central. This undirected graph is an example of transportation networks with the vertices representing names of stations that are connected and the edges representing the types of trains. Okay, now we look at the social network here on the right. These are the example of the types of social networks. Social networks are becoming more popular among teenagers and adults. Social networks are used in areas like job opportunities, business opportunities, socializing, family relationships, education, social media, and connecting with communities around the world. Even though social networks are main platforms for various activities and are useful, you should be cautious and moderate in using social networks to avoid being distracted and being deceived easily. Now we look at the first example here. Mr. Boon and his family plan to visit historical places in Malacca. The map shows three alternative routes with, with the distance, distances and estimated times needed to travel from Tangka to A. Famosa, Malacca. Here, so we can see the Tangka here and also A. Famosa. Assume P is a 46.3 km route. This is P here. Okay, Q is a 50.2 km route and R is 53.3 km route. In your opinion, why does route P takes, take the longest time compared to the other routes even though route P is the shortest route? So if you look at this 46.3 compared to the rest is the shortest, right? But the time taken is too long. So in your opinion, why does root P take the longest time? So we can see from the root here colored in blue and then partly in red. Red means there are traffic jams, right? Why do we have traffic jam? Because there are more cars on the road. That's why root P is a crowded road and also more cars on the road that makes the traffic jam. That's why root P take the longest time compared to the rest. Okay, then we look at the next example here. The table below shows the data of six pupils and the games that they like will represent the information in the form of a network. So you can see the name of the pupil over here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, six pupils with the name of the game. Okay, over here, I simplify all the game by finding the number of tally. Okay, for example, chess, we have three chesses over here. One, two, three, badminton, we have two, and so on. To represent it in the form of network, I'm going to choose the one with the highest popularity, which is chess or either netball, it's up to you. Okay, chess, there are three edges. I get the chess from here, one, two, three. So first, I'm going to draw the dot with label with chess. After that, chess come with badminton, so second dot to represent badminton. And then chess come together with football. And the next one is netball. So I'm going to check. Uh, I'm going to connect all the three of this using line, okay, to represent the edges. After that, if you can see, this tree is already done. Then we look at the second part here: football and sepatak crawl. So we have football already. Just add on one more vertex to represent sepatak crawl. 
So this one also done. And then we have badminton and netball. So join badminton to netball. And the last one is netball, volleyball. So we have netball, just join one more, volleyball. Okay, don't forget the last step is to write down all the name of the pupil at the side of the ages. Okay, like this. Next, we look at example 3 here. The table shows the choices of public transportation, estimated ta traveling time and estimated cost for a journey from Johor Bahru to Kota Bahru. So we have three types of transportation over here, bus, train and also cab. And then the duration is 9 hours for bus, 17 hours for train and 9 hours for the cab with the prices of the ticket given here. Okay, look at the question. Based on the table, determine the type of transportation that should be chosen for the situation given below and justify your answer. A. A journey involving an adult without time constraint, meaning that he is not rushing so you don't have to figure out these two here, 9 hours. So go straight to the train, 17 hours. And then look at the price with bed and without bed. With bed for adult is 49 ringgit minimum, maximum 55. And then without bed is 43. So the difference of these two is just a 6 ringgit. What, why not with a bed, right? Therefore, taking a train with bed is the best choice because the difference in the price is only 6 ringgit. Okay, then we look at B. A journey involving an adult with time constraint. So he is rushing, he cannot take the train. Okay, then we have to decide whether he is going to take the bus or he's going to take the cab. For an adult, the price of the ticket is 64 to 75, whereas for a cab is 120. So it is much more expensive, right? Therefore, taking a bus is the best choice because the duration of a journey is shorter than that of a train and then it is more economical than taking a cab. And for safety purpose, it is not wise for an individual to take a cab for a long journey. Okay, we look at the last one, C, a journey involving two adults and two children. So two adults and two children, if you calculate all the price, start from the minimum here, 64 times 4, it costs 250 something, right? And then for this one, two, child is 64, two children is 64 ringgit, two adults will be 98 ringgit. When you add up 64 and 98, it is 160 something already, right? So... Taking cap is much reasonable because the price is cheaper compared to the rest. It's only 120 ringgit. So it is the most economical choice. We look at the next example, which is example 4 here. The map below shows the domestic flight routes of Malaysia Airlines. A. Mr. Joshua walks in Kuala Lumpur. He wants to visit his family in Kota Kinabalu. Set the best route Mr. Joshua can choose. So if we look at Kuala Lumpur here and also Kinabalu, there are a few routes which is connected. One is the direct flight from KL to Kota Kinabalu. And then we also have another one which is a transit from Kuching. Okay, so there are a few routes. Therefore, the best one that Joshua can choose is the direct flight from Kuala Lumpur to Kinabalu. Okay, B. What are the advantages and disadvantages for the choice of flight map? So reasonably, of course, we know that the direct flight from Kuala Lumpur to Kota Kinabalu save time and cost. The flight from Kuala Lumpur to Kota Kinabalu with transit takes a longer time and most probably the cost of the journey is also higher. Okay, so that's the end of our chapter here. Hope you are able to master the topic. Remember to press like if you enjoyed the video. See you again next time. Thank you.